Now, the world's largest platinum producer, Amplat, said on Friday it had scaled back its January proposals to restructure its business and keep 400,000 ounces of metal of the market, on the market. It reduced the number of potential job cuts to 6,000 from the initially proposed 14,000. Amplat added that it would keep operational one of the four shafts that it had planned to mothball. Both the Association of Mine Workers and Construction Union and the National Union of Mine Workers called the revised plan unacceptable. The NUM also warned of strikes to discuss the long-term implications of Ampla's decision on union power and credibility in South Africa's mining industry. We are now joined by expert, labor expert Michael Bagram from our Cape Town bureaus. Uh, Michael, thanks for your time. Is this Hi, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Not a problem. What's your sense here? Is this, is this muggy time, if you like, in, if we can bring in the British context and the British leaders' assault on the unions in the UK uh, back in the 80s? Yeah, look, we, we are now in a, a real flux period. And in fact, I think we are probably going to have a lot of reorganizing in the trade union movement. One of the main reasons is that the workforce in South Africa today is de-unionizing. Very few people are joining trade unions. The mining industry is slightly different because that's high and very similar to government where there's high, there's over 75% uh, union membership. But if you're looking at the rest of the sectors in the employment, it's about 8% of the employees join unions. So if you look at those figures, we've got one interesting factor. We've union power is dropping yeah but we've got another interesting factor where in fact what's happened here with the umku num debate the employees are saying that we're not interested in the politics we're not interested in what's happening in terms of who rules the union who runs it how much uh, the union organizers are earning we're interested in what's happening on the ground right and i think that's a big thing what's happening Employees are starting to ask questions. They're not cannon fodder anymore. So union members want results. And hence, AMCU has become the larger and the more powerful trade union in just two years. Yeah. Um, they come out of nowhere, <coughs> and all of a sudden, they've almost destroyed NUM. Yeah. So maybe before we go in and look into that dynamic, let's look at just what it is doing to the unions on a long-term basis. Are you saying, therefore, that what we are seeing in other sectors of the economy, as you have said, is also going to be extended on the mining side, and that we are likely to see unions getting weaker, and therefore the coming of AMCO really uh, is helping that process along? Yeah, you, you're absolutely correct. I think we've got a maturing workforce in South Africa. Um, the workforce <coughs> is starting to understand that a lot of the issues are bread and butter issues. They should be decided company by company. Um, they're going to start forming their own internal associations, call them unions if you will. But I think the day of the mass union across uh, all the companies in that particular sector yeah. is falling apart. I think we are leading into a new South Africa. And I think it's a good thing. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, people still should have power and should still have their say. And I don't think there's anything wrong with people saying, we are at Anglo, we want to form our own union or our own workers' committee, and we want to move forward with our own issues. Yeah. We're not interested in uh, the politics. But Michael, if you're saying that's not a bad thing, therefore, where will that leave the workers? Because outside of the unions, should it be left to government really just to look after the welfare of workers as it ordinarily would? So, you know, this uh, responsibility now moves on to the political parties, which would be expected, of course, to then define themselves in terms of what they do for the workers and what they don't do for workers. Yeah, look, I understand that, and workers do need protection. You can't have uh, Michael Bagram approaching Angla and say, I want a wage increase. Yeah. I don't think that's going to work. People still do need to organize and still need to put themselves together. The Labor Relations Act at one stage, about 10 years ago, tried to put together these uh, workplace forums. And it never took off because Kosatu, as a union, refused to allow it. They never ever allowed these workplace forums to get off the ground. But that's the way the world is going, that a workplace where you have people together mm. would form a forum and that would negotiate directly with the bosses. What does this mean for Kosatu? <coughs> 
And importantly, what does this mean in the long term for the ANC? Well, what it means for Kosatu is that their power base is dropping. AMCO has shown that in absolute no uncertain terms, yeah. that their power is dropping. Their numbers are dropping. Outside of mining, they've dropped to about 8% organization, which is probably the lowest we've seen in years. Um, I, I strongly believe that the ANC should disassociate itself with Kosatu as a third party to mm. that triumvirate. Yeah. And the reason being that we saw all those strikes and then all of a sudden Kosatu said don't speak to AMCU. They told the government not to speak to AMCU saying they don't represent the people, you talk to us, we're in partnership. What did that lead to? That led to a Marikana because no one came forward and spoke to the real representative of the people which was mm. AMCU. We now know mm. it. We mm. know that everyone went across and joined AMCU and somehow we weren't talking. And the minister herself didn't go and talk to AMCU. It, it was a tragedy. Yeah, yeah. So what does this leave then uh, the mining communities at? Because you think about uh, the disintegration, if you like, of uh, the, 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 the union power structures and the consequent impact on employment relations. And then you think about also potentially what this means for, for, for these communities where post Marikana we have definitely seen some kind of destabilization. We certainly have, and you're right there. The point is that it's still 75% unionization at the plant, yeah. at the mines themselves. So, and AMCU is speaking on behalf of the people, and they are saying that we need to talk about bread and butter issues. They're still talking about hours of work, they're talking about how much people are earning, and now they're talking about, you've just spoken earlier about the 6,000 people that are going to be let off and told that we are retrenching, yeah. AMCU is not going to keep quiet. There's going to be a fight. And we, we unfortunately are expecting a massive fight there because of the history. Yeah. Some people are saying that this year's uh, collective bargaining uh, uh, negotiations are probably going to be one of the toughest that the country has ever seen. Uh, many people are suggesting that perhaps this will not be the case. What's your take? Uh, I think it will be the case. There's an expectation. Let's say you call me Michael a minor. I got a double digit increase last time and it came off the back of me being violent. What do I think? Yeah. What I think is that if I violent again, if I demand a double digit, I'm not going to back down until I get it. The unions can't afford to say, no, we're not going to demand that on your behalf. Yeah. Amku is still trying to compete with NUM. Numi is still trying to compete with AMCO. Yeah. They're both going to have these massive uh, demands. The mine bosses can't afford to pay it. Yeah. They're already saying we need to retrench people. We've yeah. got to uh, put uh, shafts and uh, 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 close them down. It's going to be a real problem. It's not, uh, it's not pleasant being in the mining industry at the moment. Absolutely. It's a tragedy, isn't it? Because you have, on the other hand, as you were saying, mining costs are rising. You've got power costs coming through. You've got uh, commodity prices under pressure. So you've got margins across the whole industry under pressure. On the other hand, you've got the unions, if you like, fighting to the death. Absolutely. I mean, if, if you think about it, each union has to now prove its salt. It's to show the workers that they are the real people. And uh, the, the problem that you've got is when they try and show the workers that they're the real people, they're the representatives, yeah. you're going to push management to the wall. Management are going to get upset. Yeah. They're going to say, we can't afford. We've got another massive strike. And unfortunately, it's bad for the whole country. Both you and I know that we rely on the mining industry to pay almost 50% of our income, our, mm. our taxes. Mm. Our foreign income comes via the mines in this country. Yeah. We traditionally live by the mines itself. And, and I'm pretty worried. As a labor consultant and a labor lawyer, yeah. I'm very worried that this is now rearranging the entire industrial relations mindset of the whole country. Mm. Uh, we are looking at an industrial relations nightmare about to happen on the mines and we know what happens. That spreads to the rest of the country. We know that it's spread to the um, agriculture here in the Western Cape. Mm. They tried the same trick as what happened at Marikana. It's a disaster waiting to happen. We do need government to step in. That's uh, what I was going to ask you. We can't rely entirely on management. 
That's what I was going to ask you. What can government do? I mean, government can't really be the neutral voice here, can it? Because we know, of course, government is made up of uh, the ruling party, the ruling party, which has in its uh, alliance ranks uh, COSATU, COSATU, which represents some of the workers. Yeah, once again, you're right, but we need someone to come in, and government's got the upper hand. They do have the power. Our Department of Labor has to play a leading role in this. I suggest immediately tonight that our Minister of Labor puts together a task team. Yeah. She puts economists together, uh, maybe some consultants, puts people from her department and a proper task team to investigate what's happening, especially in the platinum industry, mm. because that industry is going to collapse. It'll implode. Uh, already you're saying to a mine you're not allowed to, as government, you're not allowed to retrench more than 6,000 people when they're saying, well, we actually don't, we don't need these 6,000, we need to retrench 12,000. Um, so you're already making the mine possibly uh, um, unpalatable anyway at the best times and there'll be no profit coming out of it. Now we're going to have this massive strike. So you can imagine any investor is going to look at this and say, maybe South America is better for me, platinum's cheaper there. My feeling strongly, We've got a good Department of Labor. They need to put together a very good task team and not absent themselves yeah. when the fight happens. Let's, we know there's a fight going to happen. Yeah. We all know. We, I'm telling you right now it's going to happen. So let's get in people beforehand. When you've got two kids at school and you know that they, about, they start taunting each other, the, the teacher will come out there and then and push them apart. We need to do this now and we need to find solutions. We can. We've got a good industrial relations system that does exist. Yeah. It's being bastardized by the lack of input from the department.